please have a seat. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let me ask that. Let me say that again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all today. Uh, last week I was not here, and you are glad that I was not. Um, I was running a fever, and I was feeling horrible, and I didn't want to infect anybody. I know that some of you guys miss me. <laughs> Others of you? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm glad to be back. Um, I got several calls and cards this week, and so I want to thank you so much. Um, I want you to know that I did miss you, but I was glad I was laying in bed. Uh, I just did not feel well. It started on Friday and ended on Monday, and, and I just feel a whole lot better now that I'm here this week rather than the last week. So uh, thank you again for your prayers. Are you guys ready to uh, to get into today's message? Amen. Do me a favor, pull out your bulletin. I know you guys didn't get one, uh, your outline from your bulletin this morning. Um, you didn't get one last week, so I want to make sure you get two this week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Today we are beginning a new series, uh, just a three-week series that I'm calling War of the Worlds. And basically what I'm talking about for the next three weeks is how do you and I as Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, how do we become everything that God intended us to be? Because the reality is there's an enemy out there. The Bible says that we have an enemy and his name is Satan. And he would like nothing more than to trip us up from our faith, from our walk. And yet how do we overcome that? Well, during the series, what I want to do is I want to touch on three different things. First of all, today, I want to talk about the enemy. Why? Because it's important to identify who we're talking about. You know, when a lot of people think about Satan or they say Satan, they think of some guy with a red suit and a pitchfork. And yet the Bible says that uh, he was uh, an amazing creation, a sight to see. It was a beautiful angel of, that God created. And yet, uh, because of his pride and because of his arrogance... He fell. He was a fallen angel and became uh, became a leader of this group of angels called demons. We call them demons today. We're going to talk about what does it mean to overcome that in a believer's life today. Well, secondly, next week, what I want to talk about is how do I develop a faith that works? Because honestly, when we think about our faith, we think about how we're growing. Sometimes we ask the question, does this work? Or how do I grow in my faith? And so next week, I want to talk about that. Talk about some tools that you and I have been given by God to help us grow in our faith. The next week, we're going to be uh, talking about on Palm Sunday, how do we go in and, and invade the enemy's territory and pull out as many people as we possibly can so that they can go to heaven along with you and I. You know, Easter is coming up. The week after that is going to be Easter Sunday. And so I want to encourage you and, and I want to challenge you, those of you who come to the 11 o'clock service, to come, bring as many people as you possibly can. Think about a few people that you can invite to come to our Easter service and just be a part of that. Uh, that day we're going to be having uh, um, an Easter egg hunt for the kids outside. And so that's going to be a lot of fun. After both services, we're going to have that. So I want to encourage you to start making plans for that. Well, during this series, I want to look at, and today I want to look at, how do we become the people God created us to be? Now, notice this on your outline. Let's pull that out. Let's take a look at the very first verse at the top of our outline. It comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. Notice what it says. It says this. Friends, this world is not your home, so don't make yourselves cozy in it. Now, I love how the Bible is just so honest, so real. It basically says this, guys, this world that we're living in today, it's not our home. And if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, your home is where now, guys? Heaven. In heaven, right. It's in heaven. You've been given a life uh, of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit now indwells you. And the Bible says one day we're going to go and be in heaven. But not only that, God is working heaven out in our lives right now. He's, he's called us to live there. We are no longer citizens of this world, the Bible says. So we shouldn't make ourselves cozy in it. Now notice the rest of the passage. He says this, I beg you to avoid the evil things your bodies want to do that fight against your soul. Now, how many of you have ever done something that you did not want to do and you knew that God didn't want you to do that? How many of you have ever gone through and did that before? Raise your hand. Okay, uh, the rest of you are lying right now, but that's okay. <laughs> We've all done things that we shouldn't have done. We know that God wants us to live a certain way. He wants us to act a certain way. He wants us to talk a certain way. And for most of us, we know that there have been times when we said, you know what, God, I'm just going to do it my way. 
Well, I love the, uh, the Apostle Peter because he says this. I beg you to avoid those evil things. Why? Because they, they fight against our soul. Now notice this. This is important. It says this. People who do not believe are living all around you and might say that you are doing wrong. How many of you ever had somebody say something bad or negative about you when you didn't do it? Or you know that you didn't do the wrong thing, but they still thought that you did and they said that about you? Well, the Bible says if you're a Christian, you realize that there's people out there who might even say the bad things about you. Might even say the wrong things about you. But notice this. Peter says this. Live such good lives that they will see the good things you do and will give glory to God on the day when Christ comes again. Now look up here for a second, guys. The Bible says this world is not our home. We're supposed to live differently. We're supposed to act differently. We're supposed to not get so cozy in here that we forget like we're, we're children of God, that God loves us so much that he created us to become everything that he's called us to be. We're not to forget that. And he says this, people are looking at you. People are watching your lives. And by yours and my testimony, by how we live, by how we act, we sometimes can determine whether or not we can turn people off to God. Now, I've said this before that as Christians, we should act like Christians, right? Act like, like Christ followers. Our vision here for 2008 is to become the church. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, it means to actually live what we say we believe. To become an authentic community of believers. Now, how do we do that? We grow in our faith. And so this year is a season of growth for all of us as individuals. So I want you to be thinking about that as we go through today's message. Now, how, how do we do that? Well, luckily, God says, I'm going to give you the tools to become this person of God that I created you to be. Now, notice this on your outline. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. We're going to read this out loud together. Now, I know Doyle didn't make you do this last week, right? He didn't make you read. He didn't make you look at the outline. He didn't make you write anything down. Today is your day. <laughs> I was saying, sharing with the first uh, service that this week I went to con to uh, chapel over at the school. And I was talking to the junior hires at chapel. And I told them, let's get ready to read this verse out loud. And let's read it with some great enthusiasm. They looked at me like I was nuts. <laughs> but I made them read anyway, just like I'm going to do with you today. <laughs> Let's read it out loud. Ready? You guys ready? Ready. With some great enthusiasm? Yes. Ready? All right, here we go. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. Now look up here for a second, guys. Our battle is not with each other. When you go to church, your battle should not be with the person sitting to the left or to the right of you. The Bible says there is a real battle that's going on, and it's in the heavenly realms. And the Bible says that there's spirits that are evil, that are fighting against angels that are good, and they're fighting for the souls of men. Now, as Christians, we have overcome. Jesus Christ is overcome by his death on the cross. He has won the war, but there is still a battle going on. And you guys know what it's like to be tempted, to fall into temptation, to be carried away and enticed by things that we know we shouldn't be enticed by. And yet the scripture says this battle is going on, but God has given us the armor to fight against it. Now, we should not be fighting against each other. Now, one of the things I've shared with this church many times is we need to love one another. Isn't that true? Yes. Isn't that true, guys? Amen. And when we come to church, we don't war against one another because we already have an enemy and it's not us. We're to encourage one another. We're to love one another. We're to build one another up. We're to pray for one another. We are to love each other. The enemy is out there, but it's not us. So we remember that. The scripture says our battle is not against flesh and blood, but God has given us armor to defeat the enemy. Now notice this. In any time you go to war, in any time you have a conflict with somebody in our nation or in other countries, 
One of the things you have to do first in order to conquer and win the war is this. Now notice this on your outline. Point number one is this. I have to identify the enemy. You might want to write that down on your outline. Before you and I go to war with anybody, we have to identify the enemy. Now, remember I said, it should not be with other people. Our war is not with other people. We should pray for people who are, who are mean towards us. We should pray for people who say rude things about us. We should encourage and love people anyway. Those people who would do evil against us. The scripture says our war is not against us, but there is a real enemy. You know, what? In, when 2001 happened and 9-11 happened, we recognize that we have an enemy in our world.